Hi everyone, good morning and welcome one more time to Newspapers Camilla and Café. As always, Camilla's here, Café, your coffee is with you and newspapers, I've got them ready. Okay, so as I promised last week, today we're going to have um, a better time, let's say, a bit of a lighter topic that we're going to discuss. And it's not um, that strictly related to news per se, it's more cultural cultural related. Um, so we thought that, as we know, it's really annoying, um, especially when you have a lot of time on your hands, to browse through hundreds of different titles on Netflix and never knowing what to watch or being in a, in a bookstore and never knowing what to buy, what to read next. So since um, the, year, the end of the year is approaching, we've decided to um, focus on uh, recommendations for books and films and TV series and so on. Um, entertainment, let's say, cultural entertainment recommendations that every year the major newspapers and, uh, and magazines issue um, in order to uh, give people the, the chance to have a look at what was the best uh, cultural production of the year. So today we're going to kill two birds with one stone. Um, we are going to focus on uh, uh, commenting and looking at the language in newspapers. And at the same time, maybe you can take advantage of some of the uh, recommendations of the best journalists by The Economist. And um, so maybe during your Christmas holidays, since we won't really have that much time and that much opportunity, to spend uh, time outside and go skiing, going to the mountains. Maybe we can stay inside and read a book or watch a nice film that um, great journalists have recommended. In addition to this, um, we are going to add, it, add to it a little bit of a personal touch. In fact, I really wanted to gather uh, from the English Corner team of teachers their personal recommendations for you not only based on their taste and on our taste, but um, also devised specifically for you who are trying to improve your English and develop specific aspects of your language practice. So stay with me till the end, because after the news comment, the article comment, we are going to give you our personal recommendations. Um, as always, by the end of the, um, of the video, you're going to find the links to, to, the, to the Economist articles in the comments and and then we're also going to give you our recommendations in um, in some posts in the next days over the next days all right so i hope you enjoyed today's uh, today's activity of course it's going to be much lighter when it comes to the subject but not necessarily easier when it comes to the language because of course when describing um when describing books and talking about the um, or performance of actors we um we always need to use lots of adjectives that are quite unusual sometimes and i think it's a very good exercise to avoid using the same words over and over again when we find uh, that there are different words that we can use to uh, strengthen um the meaning of what we want to say or use a different word instead of the classic interesting okay these typical words that we use all the time or important and um, I, I hope it's going to be interesting for you to find out what else is out there so i'm going to start uh reading uh three books uh recommendations so very short reviews by the economist and then i'll move on uh, to another article and, and read about three tv series recommended so as you can see in the article next to me um, um, we've got uh, our books of the year and this image I really really like it's quite nice and cozy and it looks like just like me when I read so I thought that would be nice also to show you, also to show you this image um, okay so the first book that I've decided to um, and to to read the review of and comment with you is taken from the section politics and current affairs so current affairs are events of uh, political and social importance that are happening right now okay um current like like the word says so and the title of this book is kleptopia how dirty money is conquering the world 
quite uh, quite attention grabbing as a title, if you ask me. So let's go. It is hard to write about international corruption in an accessible and colorful way. Accessible, like easy to understand and colorful, interesting, exciting, while retaining an urgent sense of moral condemnation. So it's hard to write about international corruption in an accessible and colorful way, while continuing to have uh, this sense of moral condemnation that like something that needs to be dealt with right away. This book beautifully captures both the murkiness, so um, the, the suspect that someone's not being very honest with us, and the turpitude involved, so the very bad behaviour. Its ultimate, uh, ultimate theme, so its most important, its main theme, the intersection of politics and personal enrichment is one of the most important stories of the age. So after reading this, I, uh, this uh, short review, I think I'm going to read this book. The next one that I've chosen for you is taken from the fiction section, so probably a bit lighter. And I've decided to read this one for you because I honestly love this author. And I was quite surprised it was here because I didn't know uh, that it was famous enough to be in um, in this review by The Economist. And it's uh, an author by um, from Kenya, and I absolutely adore him. You should really read what, what he writes. He's amazing. This last book um, of his, uh, the latest book of his, is The Perfect Nine. That's the title. Most writers um, lose their energy and inventiveness as they grow old. So they lose their ability to think of, um, of how to write in an interesting and fresh way, new way. As they grow old, they become older. You see here the use of grow um, to express the process of becoming old little by little. Not to the 82-year-old Kenyan author, <clears throat> uh, of this fresh and magical novel. So that brings new perspective. That's what fresh means. Written in a galloping blank verse. So galloping is a word that's related to the rhythm, to the pace that's speeding rapidly of, of the writing. And blank verse is um, a re regular metrical line, very typical of the English poetry. So written in a galloping, galloping blank verse, it tells of the very first Kikuyu and their passionate attachment to Mount Kenya, the home of their god Ngai. So Kikuyu is an, the name of an ethnic, ethnic group in Kenya and Ngugi, the, the author, um, is part of this, this ethnic group. So most of his work is based on this. Um, and the last review that I'm going to read for you is taken from the business and economics section. And it's called Open, the story of human progress. Progress depends on openness, this, book's, this book contends. So this book declares, argues. Yet that creates a backlash. So a strong negative reaction um, from a big number of people, a large number of people. Since people are hardwired to fear rapid change. So it's in, innate in their instinct to fear, to, to be scared of rapid change. The author marshals arresting examples from every continent and era. So the author gathers and organizes uh, attractive examples of, of this. Um, from every continent and era, ending on an optimistic, timely, timely note. So the final remark uh, comes right at the time for the, mo the, the period we are living in. Recent years have seen the rise of populist demagogues, political leaders whose arguments are more based on emotion rather than, um, uh, than facts, these demagogues who want to pull up, draw bridges, you know, those bridges that used to separate castles from the rest of the land. So they want to create obstacles. But such leaders eventually lose their power because they are hopeless, extremely bad at governing. 
So this book is uh, about business and economics, but very much related to, to politics as well, as you've seen. So it's called The Story of Human Progress, and maybe we need a little perspective right now. All right, I'm going to move on to, um, to the entertainment section, let's say, and looking at the best television series of 2020. As always, if you are curious um, to know something or you want to share with us what, what you think about these series, these books, or if you have recommendations for everyone else, please use the comments. You can write for everyone to see. And I'd love to have the chance to interact with you too. All right, looking at the best television series of 2020, um, the, the subtitle says, as you're going to see in a minute uh, on the screen, um, these excellent shows made the long evenings and weekends in isolation tolerable. Okay, so we have a very clear um, relationship with the, the period we're going through, the moment we're living in, which is this um, staying indoors. So I think everybody's been watching uh, a few series lately. All right, I'm going to comment the first three ones that appear in the article for no specific reason, just because I thought that since they were at the top of the article, they might be the best ones, I'm not sure. So um, if you've watched them, please go ahead and share with us your ideas. So the first one is called A Better Call Saul. Difficult though it should be to do a prequel to Breaking Bad, one of the television's most celebrated series, there is no recent, recent show that feels so effortlessly superb as Better Call Saul. All right, so there's quite a lot of interesting information grammar-wise and vocabulary-wise in these couple of lines. So I'm going to read it back to you and give you um, a couple more uh, more um, insights. So difficult though it should be, this is uh, a, a way to give emphasis to what we are saying. So um, it, it's an emphatic way to move around words in the sentence to show um, this emphasis on what you what you think, what you want to express. So it, it says basically, however difficult it might be, despite the fact that it's difficult um, to do a prequel, so the opposite of a sequel, something that comes before. Um, a prequel to Breaking Bad, one of the television's most famous and celebrated stories. There is a no recent show that feels so effortly, effortlessly superb as Better Call Saul. So it seems like um, they did something amazing that l has lots of good qualities and it didn't even take any effort. So it seems like it was quite simple to create such an amazing um, such an amazing work of work of art cinema wise the fifth season offered much of a much of the franchise best acting direction and writing terminology proper of the uh, words of cinema while also finding a way to deepen the story told by its predecessor so to deepen is to go deep in the story, okay? It's the verb related to deep, so to dig deep into these stories. With Better Call Saul, Maestro Vince uh, Gilligan and Peter Gould have produced a series that can rival even the best schemes of the fabled Heisenberg and Sleepy Jimmy. So um, to rival is to, um, to, com to compete with, so we can see the different use of rival um, with a direct object to rival the best schemes. If we use uh, compete with, we have to put the preposition with. So that's a little difference in the use of these words. Um, so rival even the best schemes. Schemes are plans, um, usually not very legal. So trying to get money out of someone uh, in an illegal way um and uh, so the best schemes of the fabled famous uh, heisenberg and sleepy jimmy all right the second one of course it's the crown i have to say honestly i haven't watched it yet but i will uh, especially after reading this the performance must be very good uh, according to what the the journalists say so the fourth season of netflix's lavish drama 
lavish is um, impressive amount wise the money that's been uh, um been funneled into it and it's a very long series composed of many episodes that was lavish that's impressive in amount so the fourth season of netflix's lavish drama about the reign of queen elizabeth ii was the best yet so it has outperformed all the other seasons peter morgan the show's creator has compelling material to work with so very attractive irresistible material to work with in this for this season the premiership of margaret thatcher so the period in which she was a prime minister and her clashes her conflicts with the queen the assassination of lord lewis uh, mount Bracton by the ira the irish republican army so here we introduce the irish question and of course the tumultuous marriage of prince charles and lady diana spencer Yet, it was the performance of the newcomers, um, so the actors that have just joined the cast, which made the material come to life. So here we have um, what we call in, in grammar a cleft sentence, when we move parts of the sentence around um, to express emphasis once more. So yet it was the performance of the newcomers which made the material come to life this is a cleft sentence so convincing was the crown in fact that fans of uh, fans of the late princess flooded social media with condemnation of prince charles okay here we have another example of um, of a grammar technique a uh, language technique to to give emphasis and it's called fronting when we put at the beginning of a sentence something that would usually go um, in another position um, and so we have so convincing was the crown that the fans of the late princess flooded okay we've moved the words around to show very clearly what um, how much we want to emphasize the fact that the crown was convincing. Now, when we say the late princess, it means uh, that she has already died, okay? <clears throat> um, okay, Oliver Dowden, Britain's uh, culture secretary, asked Netflix to make, to make it clear that the events depicted, so that appeared on screen, were fictionalized because it was such uh, uh, such a big reaction from the public, from the audience. The last one that I wanted to focus on is called The Great. <clears throat> so Tony McNamara, the co-writer of The Favourite, created another witty, saucy period drama at a European court, this time in Imperial Russia. So witty means funny in a clever way, saucy is like referring to sex in a humorous way, and period drama means related to a specific period of history, okay? Um, the Great tells the story of Catherine II as she marries and then plots to kill, so makes secret plans to kill, the monstrous but also very funny Peter III. Elf Fanning is charming, attractive, and convincing as, as an idealist who keeps being rudely awake, awakened by reality. So she's an idealist and reality basically slaps her, slaps her in the face all the time, okay? Awakened is, um, she, she can see reality and she clashes badly with it. Um, while Nicholas Hult has perfect comic timing in a deliciously outrageous role, Outrageous is like scandalous, disrespectful to the social rules. A refreshingly diverse cast, so pleasantly new and different. Um, so a refreshingly diverse cast of psychophants, so pers uh, people who praise uh, powerful people in order to get something out of them, not um, out of their, their own goodness of heart and schemers, so people that make secret plans, fill out an entertaining court. The show looks beautiful too, but its great strength is that the characters are living, breathing humans who joke around and have fun, as well as a lot of sex, rather than stuffy, formal and boring historical figures 
who speak in clipped sentences, so not very friendly way of speaking. Mr. McNamara paid little heed, little attention to the fact. Who will cause the show anti-historical, but viewers will be thankful for the inaccuracy. So this is, uh, this is the last series that I, I wanted to comment with you and read about with you because I would like to leave a little space to, to your comments if there is any. So I can see that uh, someone says that Better Call Saul is, uh, is a very good one. So they agree with The Economist. And I would, now, um, I, will, I would like now to move on to our English Corner recommendations by our teachers. So <clears throat> we've got different categories, really, because everybody wanted to uh, give their own ideas and based on their interests as well. So as films, we have, um, so we have uh, films and series and books and so on. Um, unfortunately, they are not um, issued or, um, or published uh, or released uh, or films that came out in 2020, but it's something that we watched in 2020. Um, so it's something that we would like to recommend to you. So we have, um, we have a film, um, which is Paris, Texas, which um, features American English and it's set in the 80s. So this is not a new film, but uh, according to, uh, to Kehan, our teacher, it's really worth watching and you can find it easily on Amazon Prime, if I'm not mistaken. Then we move on to series. So I'm not going to name all the teachers that gave the recommendations, but everybody really um, gave their suggestions in this um, in this um, in this case of series. So The Sopranos, based on New Jersey accents. Then The Good Place, American English and British English together, and uh, it's um, it's very fun, down to earth way of talking about life after after death. Then we have Raised by the Wolves by Ridley Scott. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi drama. Um, language is um, very much related to technology and also to religion in a way. And they've been uh, telling me that soundtracks are also amazing um, when it comes to this, uh, to this series. Then we have Bojack Horseman, which takes place in LA. And uh, so the the humor can get pretty dark, so it might hurt your uh, your sensitivity. But it's um, it shows the mentality of the work uh, of the work environment um, of the work environment of the show business. Then we have The Handmaid's Tale, and which is a bit disturbing, but acted and produced it and produced greatly by Margaret Atwood, uh, which is the, the writer of this story. And the same person, the same writer also um, uh, wrote about a, a series that's um, set in Canada once more in the um, 1900s, and it's called Alias Grace. Then we have British TV series that um, I have two uh, examples here for you. Um, Afterlife and Fleabag. And then we have um, for uh, New York slang, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Motor Family and Atypical, which are okay the, to watch with the whole family. And um, they're a bit about life just, uh, you know, going its way. And um, let's not judge, let's just um, live in love. All right, moving on to books. Um, I've got a couple of suggestions of my own that I wanted to leave you. So if you like short stories, check out the, the Cameron Project uh, by the New York Times. You can find it online and they're very nice short stories, uh, quite quick, um, but really uh, eye-opening ones. Um, then I strongly suggest the uh, British writer Zadie Smith. Um, she part of her family is from the Caribbean, so she can write in a way that is fantastic because she reproduces the, the language of different immigrant communities in London. And, um, and then um, Ellie suggested, our teacher Ellie suggested the rise, creativity, the gift of failure and search for mastery. So how great achievements uh, follow failed attempts. 
All right, then we've got one post podcast recommendation by me. Um, it's called The Infinite Monkey Cage. It's a British uh, podcast. You can find it on the BBC4 and on Spotify, for example, among other platforms. Um, it's uh, science-based and it talks about science and how the world around us works with such a humor that I think it's extremely entertaining um, besides you learn something. And then we have from um, one of our teacher who is a former uh, musician. I mean, actually still a musician, but um, he used to uh, play with a band. So we've got music recommendations. Um, so English album recommended. It's called A Fine Line by Harry Styles. He uh, rep uh, recommends it for pronunciation, style and different structures. Then we have um, American Black Music Culture. Because I Love You by Lizzo um, for slang, vocabulary and Black American humour. And then where you can find a proper British uh, street talk, okay, in Weird by Youngblood. And so this is urban English slang and style. And then we have one magazine recommendation, uh, Monocle, which is accurate and contemporary, engaging and dealing with today's society from different points of view. So there is innovation, technology, architecture. So many different recommendations for you. Um, I'm going to have uh, a look at the comments. Okay, so someone asks where she can find Afterlife. Honestly, I don't know um, because I haven't watched it yet. So I'll, okay, maybe on Netflix, um, Benedetta says. So um, check out the comments to find out more about where you can find and the different films and the books that we've we've and series we've talked about anyways don't worry because you're going to find all of our recommendations by the english corner um on posts coming up i don't know if today or in the next days but you're going to to see them somewhere i hope you enjoyed today's um little bit different appointment with me and um I don't know, unless there is any other comment or anyone else wanting to share things with us, I'd leave you to to, to the rest of your day. And um, Merry Christmas, first of all, and Happy New Year. Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy, try to rest on these days since we can't really go out. And I'll see you next week on Wednesday at 9.15 in the morning, as always. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks for being here with me today.